In this lesson I'm going to demonstrate how to move a mailbox within an Exchange 2010 organization. So here on our uh, Training Lab server we've got all these newly created uh, mailbox users and what I'm going to do is move Alan Reed from his existing uh, database to another database. So let's first of all have a look at his properties and see which database he's on already. Okay, So at the moment he's on mailbox database 1 so I'm going to move him to Mailbox Database 2. And the way we can do that is over here in the Actions pane we can start a new local move request or just right click on that mailbox and choose it from the menu. And we get this new local move request wizard. So because we've already chosen Alan he's here in the list and we get to choose a target Mailbox Database as well. So we'll pick Mailbox Database 2 OK and then next again. I'm also going to enable this option here to suspend the move when it's ready to complete uh, and that just gives me the opportunity to demonstrate a couple of things about this move, how these move requests work in Exchange 2010 as well as uh, demonstrate one of the ways that you can perform moves of your mailboxes in Exchange 2010 uh, with the least possible user disruption. So I'll tick that box to suspend the move, click next and then new. And that task is now complete. So all we've done at this point is create the move request itself. We haven't actually moved the mailbox. And that's an important distinction with Exchange 2010 as compared to previous versions of Exchange that you create move requests rather than perform the moves as an interactive process. So we don't need to leave this wizard dialog open or leave a, a, a PowerShell window open while the moves are in process. All we're actually doing is issuing the move request and the Exchange server itself, specifically the client access server, performs the move in the background for us. So it's no longer a process that you need to watch uh, and uh, uh, avoid interrupting. So I can click finish to clear that wizard and we can have a look at the status of the move request here in this move request section under recipient configuration. So here is our move request for Alan Reed, and let's have a look at the properties of it. Now it's not a very large mailbox so it's actually progressed all the way to 95% completion at this point because there really wasn't anything, uh, any data to move and it has automatically suspended the move request um, which is what we requested it to do by ticking that box during the uh, new uh, move request wizard so at the moment it's sitting in a state of 95% uh, completion and automatically suspended. So what does that mean for the end user? This is Alan Reed's mailbox in Outlook and it still says connected to Microsoft Exchange. So what I'll do is take this email from Alan that was sent to the Gmail address uh, that I also use, exchange server pro at gmail.com and we'll just send a reply back to Alan. And that reply was received. So even though that move request is in process, Alan can still continue to use his mailbox. And that's because of a feature of Exchange 2010 known as online mailbox moves. And what that means is the server is able to process the move request in the background without forcing the user to, uh, without locking the mailbox so that the user can't use it. And if you combine that with that ability to suspend move requests, you can perform uh, most of the move as an online move during the day or at really at any time you want, and then perform have the uh, mailbox requ uh, move request sit there in a suspended state until you're ready to sort of basically flip the switch and complete it so you can schedule that for a more specific time of day that suits the end user and the actual window of disruption to the user is very small the only time they're not able to use their mailbox is while the move request is in that stage between suspended and completed rather than the entire time it takes to move all of their mailbox data so you greatly reduce the impact of mailbox moves in your organization by using online mailbox moves combining them with suspended move requests so let's go back to that move request now and see what happens when we choose to complete it. 
So we can do that just by right clicking on the move request and selecting complete move request. Say yes. And because there's very little data to actually move, this should complete fairly quickly. See we're in a moving state again. Now we're in a status of completing, so it's uh, finished moving the data and it's uh, just updating the attributes on the user object to point to the new Marmbox database. And now the move request has reached a status of completed. So let's go back to Alan's desktop and have a look. Let's see what happens if we send another email in from that Gmail account. See that email has been received. We'll try replying to it. Email passes through the Outbox and is sent. Let's have a look at the connection status for Outlook. You can see that the connection is all still established. So one of the advantages of Exchange 2010 and the way that Outlook uh, users connect to the uh, client access server as the MAPI endpoint is that mailbox moves can also go on uh, behind the scenes between Marbox databases and they won't necessarily impact the end user at all because their connection is being proxied through the client access server. So you can see there's a combination of a mul multiple uh, features of Exchange 2010 that allow Marbox, uh, Marbox moves such as for capacity management or for bulk migrations to be performed in a way that is either very minimally disruptive to the users or in some cases not at all. So we'll just go back to the Exchange server now to round out that task and we can see that Alan's mailbox has this little green icon next to him which uh, indicates that there is a move request in, uh, assigned to him or in, involved with him. We can see that his mailbox database attribute is updated to mailbox database 2. And the last thing we need to do is clean up this move request. So this move request sits here in a completed state and that will actually prevent us from issuing any new move requests for Alan until this one has been cleared. So we'll just right click, clear that move request. And now that's all finished.